So Etsy had an ad in the Super Bowl about the gift mode that people keep complaining about. Redbubble updated their fees. Again, TeePublic changed the number of collections. Celebrities are talking about buying from Etsy. Zazzle changed their cover images for collection. Everybody's asking me about art storefronts. Spoonflower made some changes. Printful made changes, Society6 has multiple people just complaining about them with changes for the worse. Fourth Wall adding more payment options, Ideogram changes, Hostinger added a bunch of stuff, Printify added a bunch of stuff. There is a Canadian print-on-demand books company for some reason, and I just discovered a few things about Shopify, and that's what this video is gonna be about. Print on Man news for February 2024. But in order for me to get started with this, I just have to get one thing out of the way, which is, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mero, and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And we do have a bunch of stuff that have been happening in the last few weeks or months that I would like to bring up to your attention. Whether you're selling on a marketplace, selling your own stuff, or just interested to see what's happening in the world of print and a man without a clickbait video of eight minutes of me talking about how bad Redbubble is again. Let's get started with like a short piece just to get it out of the way. T Public allowing 50 collections and not just 10. I remember making a video about the 10 collections that I'm gonna have on T Public because I was really considering what 10 niches am I gonna have there? Well, now they have 50 collections that you can update, not just 10. Very short update. Moving on to Etsy. And they have the AI gift shopping. I have not tried it because I don't care and I honestly don't like Etsy that much. But a lot of people have had concerns about this. First of all, they had a Super Bowl ad for their Etsy gift mode, which is... Um, money well spent. I mean, again, you're on the Etsy marketplace. You're one of millions of sellers. Them spending money on that, good, bad. I think everybody knows Etsy by now. The ad was actually kind of good. I'm going to talk about it in a minute, but the fact is they could have used that money to, you know, monitor their platform better. That could have been a better use of that money, like hiring people for customer service or fixing the bug that they've been having for the last, what, five years that gets you automatically suspended for no reason with customer support telling you you did something wrong. They don't know what you did wrong. Actually, nothing is wrong. And then your shop is either activated or gone and no one can tell you why. So let's start with a Super Bowl ad, which was actually kind of cool. For those of you who haven't seen it, I'm going to leave a link down below to the Super Bowl ad. It was, from my understanding, a bunch of British people trying to make peace with the French, and so they decided they need to give them something, but they don't know what to give French people, so they go on to Etsy with their AI gift mode app and just search for what French people like, and at the end of the day, everybody's happy because they got them a new cheese board. But there have actually been some issues with this gift mode. One of the main ones is the fact that when you're on the gift mode, it features certain photos of the things that you can buy, but then you can't buy them. And this is from the Etsy community forum. Uh, Stitch in Time Hoops wrote, GIF mode, Etsy is using my photo, but not offering my listing. So in GIF mode, with each type of gift suggestion, there is a little picture of an example item. The example item for the gift suggestion called the Pisces is one of my pieces. I'm guessing she was super excited, right? You can see yourself on the Etsy GIF mode. But when you click through to the suggestions under the heading, my listing is nowhere to be found. What can I do? I've already added the keywords to my listing title, but no change. It doesn't seem fair, anyone else running into this problem. And a lot of people replied to her what I would say. Well, when you join Etsy, a part of the terms of service is that they can use your photos to do whatever they want. And being fair is not a part of their business structure model, in my opinion. No one sue me for that. But it is true, they can use your photos for whatever they want and not link <laughs> to your items. Another person created a thread on the community forum of Etsy, Indigo and Lux. Is it just me or is this gift mode thing clearly incomplete? And a lot of people have been saying that. I played around in gift mode and it seems that an overwhelming part of what's in gift mode are very selective niche down statement pieces, emphasis on very. And she goes into describing something for a, ho a new homeowner, someone who just bought a house, 
The three things she saw in gift mode were Christmas ornaments, address labels, and doormats. And she adds to that, Christmas ornaments, it's February. Why would you buy Christmas ornaments as a gift for a new homeowner in February? Address labels, do people even use those anymore? And doormats. There are so many options of what Etsy could have shown for new homeowners. None of them were actually in these options. And this goes on and on with people complaining about the Etsy gift mode. Now, I haven't been on Etsy for a while. I'm not doing Etsy anymore for many, many, many reasons. But I have seen sort of this like thing that people talk about that Etsy is trying to get celebrities to talk about shopping from Etsy. I personally have a friend that had one of the Kardashians keep buying from her. That was kind of cool. The Kardashian, I don't remember which one. I'm so bad at this, even had posts with one of her products, which was amazing. And I started hearing from people that Etsy's trying to get celebrities to do that. There was an article about Drew Barrymore when she's shopping on Etsy, revealing the items that she bought on Etsy, which again, is amazing publicity and great for the actual shops that this was purchased from. So I actually tried to see if there were more celebrities buying from Etsy. And that led me into a very dark rabbit hole because I typed in celebrities purchasing on Etsy or celebrities who purchased on Etsy. That led me to Etsy listings with celebrity photos, not to mention the fact that these photos are not legal to sell. You can't sell a photo from the album of Britney Spears as a photo. Also, you can't sell photos that you did not take. Ta-da! And you don't have the rights to sell them of someone else's face made by another photographer. But that wasn't the worst part. Now, I have my adult filtering on. I'm not supposed to be seeing adult content, which I can't find it now. But I was bombarded with adult photos in your face of celebrities. Most of these celebrities never, never actually made these photos. There is a super rising trend on Etsy of AI-made nude celebrity photos. There is a huge spike in nude celebrity photos on Etsy. And not to mention the whole uh, pizza files. For those of you who know what that means, that was also extremely, extremely disturbing to see that this has been happening on Etsy. And I think to myself, how much does it cost to make a Super Bowl ad? Maybe Etsy can use that money to monitor and take down AI photos of nude celebrities and pizza files. For those of you who don't know what it is, think about what it sounds like, the fact that it's illegal, and maybe ask Etsy to put some of their advertising money into getting that trash out of their platform. With that heavy note, let's talk about something funny, like Redbubble raising their fees again. So I made a list of uh, the fees that Redbubble have uploaded. I wanted to compare the listing fees, and these are the fees that they're taking from the lower tier artists. I wanted to compare the two and to see like what what they're taking before and what they're taking now. And then I noticed that the rows, because I copied all the information for the then and now, have very different length because in the now version, There is a point where they pretty much change your fee based on the literal dollar that you make. So if we're talking about before January 31st, when they made this change, if you made between four and $4.99 that month, you'll be paying 1.85 commission. Now you'll be paying 2.45. So if you made $4, you're going to pay more than 50% commission in fees. And later on, I noticed like the old system was up until like 20 and then it was from 20 to 25, 25 to 30. No, not now. Now, if you make between 25 and 25.99, you're paying as a low tier member of Redbubble 17.45 in fees. So if you made a commission of $25 with Redbubble that month, you will actually make 8.55. I don't know if to laugh or to cry, but what I can tell you, when you're in a marketplace, you're under their rules. That's it. That's it. 
You can complain about this until the sun becomes blue. It's not going to change the fact that it's their platform. Whether they want to destroy it for a reason or not, I know a lot of companies would like to change their profit margin if they're considering being bought or if they're looking for investors. I really don't know what's happening with this, but they are taking amounts that are 80, 70% of the commission that you're getting as a feedback to them if you're on the low tier. I am working on a video, is Redbubble or TeePublic worth it in 2024? This will be a very big point here because this is ridiculous, ridiculous. And it was actually kind of a surprise for me. I wasn't really surprised with the artist fees because they were kind of, I don't know, sort of expected. And then the old one, if you make like $25, you lose 11, but now you lose 17 and a half. It's kind of weird. It's kind of dicey. And they're pretty much not leaving anything in the hands of the actual sellers. Maybe they're trying to get rid of the people who just, I don't know, spam the platform with uploading 30 designs per day and don't do any marketing. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. And this is the best way to do it if they were trying to do it. But I do know some actual artists who bring in their own traffic, who have sales, who went into the lower tier, which is ridiculous. See, I didn't need an eight minute clickbait video about this. Okay, moving on to Zazzle. Zazzle is changing their single cover images for their collections and a lot of people are, are upset about this. So whenever you have a collection on Zazzle, you can have this like banner photo and a lot of people use a banner photo by creating a collage of photos from Canva or by simply having some of those elegant titles with the name of the collection. But now they're changing it and a lot of people are upset. There has been a big confusion about this because this is happening on the 1st of March. People got confused. Some people got an email about this. Some people didn't get an email. I didn't get an email. The person who alerted to this to us and the group didn't get an email. Everybody's just sort of seeing it online. But the main gist is that they want multiple photos for a collection banner. If there aren't any, they're going to remove that collection banner or that collection. Again, I am still confused on that. I'm bringing the news. That doesn't mean I understand them. And a lot of people are pissed off because people said, well, thank you for giving me a two weeks notice. Well, actually not giving me, I didn't get an email. When I have now to change more than a thousand collections, otherwise what? They're going to get deleted. They're going to get removed. Your shop is going to get destroyed overnight, even though what they want is multiple images for a collection banner and that person made one image containing multiple images so she so the the buyer is seeing the same thing but this is somehow wrong and that leads me again to not your shop not in your control whenever you're on a marketplace they can decide to do whatever they want that's the same with a supplier by the way let's say you have a very successful bathing suit and bikini that you want to sell with printful and they stop making it that's it. Not your product, not in your control. Not your shop, not in your control. Moving on to art storefronts. Um, I've had someone posting about this in the group, but also a lot of people DM me that they have been seeing ads all over Facebook and Instagram about a service called art storefronts. They're not really sure if it's something like T-Mill or Fourth Wall, or if it's kind of those like pop-up shops of Printify or Teespring. They don't know what it is and it's really hard to get the information, whether they integrate with the supplier, whether they are the supplier. So I decided to check that out. I went into their main page, which doesn't have a menu. That kind of looks weird. That was like my first like, what? I tried scanning for the word integration, print on demand, a bunch of these things to try to understand what's going on, what you actually get. And then I said, okay, you know, I need to contact them. So I filled out a contact form, which said that the contact form couldn't send. And then I filled it out again and again and again, and it couldn't send multiple times from multiple browsers, from multiple IP addresses. And then I tried reaching to them on Instagram, where I pretty much got a robot inviting me to open my store and showing me the demo. I tried contacting them on Facebook, which resulted in the same bot sending me through the same process. And then finally, after chatting with their robot and frequently asking to speak to a human, I was moved to ask to fill out like an email thing. And they actually reached back to me to schedule a talk and talk about this. So I'm keeping you guys updated on that because I know that a lot of people have been asking me questions. Moving on to Spoonflower, which is a company for awesome fabrics, which I kind of dabbled with, I think, like tried to look into 
I think it was a few, over a year ago, I was looking into Spoonflower and I noticed that when I want to upload a fabric, they want me to order it. And I was like, I don't want to order the fabric. I want to sell fabrics. But when you are starting to sell Spoonflower, you have to buy your own fabrics. I wasn't ready at the time. I didn't know where it's going to get shipped from. I didn't really know what to do. And apparently that changed. As of now, there is going to be a digital proofing for the fabrics, for the files that you upload to Spoonflower, and you no longer have to order your own fabrics every time you want to upload a new pattern or a new fabric design onto Spoonflower. I also heard that they shut down one of their fulfillment centers, the one in Europe, and they only ship from the US right now. I'm really looking into that. We have a Spoonflower thread over on our Facebook group. There are a lot of people from our Facebook group selling on Spoonflower, so feel free to join the Facebook group. If you didn't know we have one, there's a link down below. We just passed 2,000 members, which is really, really awesome. So feel free to join that and check out this, the thread about Spoonflower if you're interested in tips. I feel like I'm going against my instinct here because my instinct would be like, oh, I'm going to open a shop there and I'm going to test out everything and let you know. But that was like so 2022 and 2023. The biggest shiny new thing syndrome for me is this channel and the things that you send me. So I might look into that. I might just focus on my own stores. Moving on to Printful where everything seemed to be recycled these days, whether it's new products that are recycled or old products that changed their fabric type. And I was actually surprised to find out that the all over print hoodie is now recycled or something, but they actually changed the material in August. I don't know why I didn't see this until now. There was a video about the all over print hoodies from Printful that I did on this channel. And I am selling all over print hoodies from Printful on both of my fourth wall shops. They actually sold those specific ones. So I decided it's about time to test out the new materials versus the old one. So I made an order for two different hoodies designed in two different styles and I'm gonna make a video about the new all over print hoodie from Printful the minute they arrive. There was a full, by the way, the hoodies from Printful tutorial, whether you're selling on Etsy, Shopify, WooCommerce, or fourth wall. We'll leave a link to that one down below. And this is also from Printful fourth wall. I, I don't remember which one is it. It's the Gildan 18,000. And I love it. I feel like I'm working in my pajamas or like in an ice cream factory with this thing. So cute. Printful also added a bunch of products. Let's call them holiday decor or table decor with napkins, placemats, and table runners. And I actually ordered the table runner and it came in horrible, horrible, super pixelated, horrible thing. And I've been doing print on demand for a while now. I've been doing print on demand for seven years almost. There will be a video about that in the 1st of March because I'm seven years with print on demand in the 1st of March. And I know how to create a file that will print well. But their printing was horrible. I actually went into the Printful Insider group where multiple people have been complaining that the table runners are in very bad quality. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your stores, but I removed table runners from my stores and I really was was aiming for them for the holidays. So I removed that. I also think that you could get a lot of information from the Printful Insider group on Facebook, whether you're selling directly with Printful or even with Fourth Wall, a lot of people are comparing notes and it's a really good group to be in. Moving on to Society6, where we have nothing but complaints, nothing new under the sun. They have implemented their new, uh, plans or whatever and people are complaining all over on reddit but since they have moved and switched to this new paid plan they've actually been getting less sales i don't know if that's true because this switch is also like january february which is generally speaking less time that people shop online but i can tell you that if you look through similar web stats society six traffic has been declining even on months where redbubble is going up so yeah and also many people are complaining about the fact that the site isn't loading or every time they search something on Society6, it tells them that it can't be found. I also found some bugs with my store. Whenever I switch to uh, the second page of my products, it just does not load and I have to refresh it all the time. So thoughts about that, anyone? Is anyone still on Society6? How is everyone doing? I'm seriously thinking to drop this off. I don't know. I love their products. I love the fact that I can create really nice products, but maybe it's time to stop 
wanting to sell tablecloths and a lot of the products that I, I do like to sell and just move on and focus on what I can sell rather on a platform that runs really slow. Please let me know what you guys think about that. And moving to the platform that I am focusing on is Fourth Wall. So Fourth Wall updated more payment options for your buyers, a lot more. I will leave a link down below to their updates because there are a lot more payment options available, including payments like Klarna and Afterpay, so your buyers can pay with multiple payments. Again, link down below to the news about that. They also added something into their shop builder, which is actually like one of those um, one of those blocks that you can create, one of those elements, like an about section, a photo, a, a featured collection. They actually added a specific one just for links, for you to create links pages using fourth wall, which is actually kind of cool. Let me know if you want me to make like a very quick, like, I think it will be like a six minute tutorial on how to create a links page using fourth wall. Please let me know in the comments down below. By the way, if you like this video so far or found this content useful, please hit the like button down below because every time you do that, it really does help my channel and subscribe for more in-depth videos and not just news every now and again. Not leaving fourth wall just yet, this is just a small update. Did you know that they have a Discord server? It's actually pretty cool and people there are really nice. I find looking at other people's stuff, what they're doing is very inspiring and it's nice being some kind of in a, a part of a community. It's weird for me to be a part of a print and event community that I'm not the boss of. It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> so join Discord. If you're on fourth wall, seriously join their Discord. It's a lot of fun. You'll get all the updates straight away. You can ask for things, communicate with them much better, even though their customer support is amazing. And Vincent, I love you. Thank you. Moving on to Ideogram. So Ideogram, I don't remember when they did it, but they switched to 25 prompts a day. They were at the beginning, very free. Now they switched to 25 prompts a day and they have paid plans. With the paid plans, I think with the highest one, they also have a private generator and they say that for the paid plans, you also get PNG quality, not just JPEG. Now, since I didn't want to pay to see if you get any different size, I actually joined their Discord channel and asked there and people told me that even with the highest paid plan, the PNG file that you get is just PNG instead of JPEG. It's still the exact same size. They also added the ideogram editor, which I haven't played around with. It's not really my thing, but if you like ideogram, I really recommend to check out their editor. It could be kind of cool to work on things on their platform, even though again, the majority of the things I did with the diagram was just either just directly for social media or recreate them myself using Procreate. I much prefer using Lexica than Ideogram and I am on the paid plan. There was a video about how I take Lexica items and create clip art from them, create really cool graphics to put on products even though they're small, and another video about the 300 DPI line. We'll leave links to those down below. And I'm guessing in a couple of days there will be the full Lexica video on how I use Lexica. Moving on to Hostinger, which now gives you a QR code for your website builder. Whether it's a QR code that leads people directly to your website, or it's a QR code for a specific page on your website that you can use, for example, on a business card. And with that, I realized that I forgot something really cool because Printful now has print on demand business cards. I think that I'm going to get a QR code for the mayaroyo.com the links page that I did using Hostinger Builder and 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 print it on a printful greeting uh, on a printful business cards. Do you want me to do like a business card review? Please let me know in the comments. I'm super psyched that they did that. I can't believe I forgot. It's even written in front of me and I forgot to say that. So you do have the option to generate a QR code directly from Hostinger to refer people to your website, whether it's from print media or from social media. They also added an AI page builder to their website builder. They do have an AI website builder, which works kind of well. And I think it's one of my favorite when it comes to AI website builders, which side note, an AI website builder is not an AI website builder. It's a template-based website builder that has AI for photos and for text. But Hostinger added within the website. So if you already have a website using the Hostinger website builder, you just have an AI button to create a bunch of stuff directly on the website to generate images, 
to get text and to generate a whole new page using their builder. Let me know if you want me to make more Hostinger tutorials, anyone for a Hostinger blog video, let me know. We're moving on with Printify that launched um, consumer packaged goods. <laughs> That's how they call it. And I don't think they're the only ones who do it. I mean, I know that they're not the only ones who do that, but they now have, what, their own coffee? So for the first time, millions of Printify merchants will be able to customize skincare, coffee, and supplements to sell in their online store. I don't think I'm so happy about the supplements thing. I don't know. In any case, this is not the first time that a print-on-demand company allows you to sell that. Printful already has like two types of body lotion and two soaps. Zazzle also has coffee, chocolate bars, lipsticks, and for some reason, 12 bottle sets of hand lotion. But hey, if you're selling with Printify, you can now sell coffee, skincare products, and supplements with your own... Is that supposed to be like to grandma? <laughs> Or, oh, for the mom to be with some folic acid. <laughs> I don't, I seriously don't know. In other news, Canadians will now have print on demand books. Yeah, University of Toronto press partners with Rapido Books to deliver first of its kind Canadian print on demand solution. I believe a link to that one down below. It could be really interesting. I know we do have a lot of viewers from Canada. Uh, because of the Art of Wear videos, but yeah, there's gonna be like a Canadian KDP. I'm not really sure how it's gonna work yet. I'm not sure I'm gonna test it out, but hey, if you're Canadian and you like books, I really recommend you look into that further. Again, link to that down below. Okay, we have a lot of links for this video, so I think I'm gonna leave a link to a blog post on maytribe.com with all of the links for all of the resources and the articles in this video. Coming up to something that is not news, but it was news to me. So. I was at the co-working, I think it was like two, three weeks ago, and I was talking to someone about Fourth Wall because he's using Shopify, and I found out that Shopify is very different now. I remember Shopify from being like $12 a month and you get a month free trial. Now it's like a minimum of $24 a month if you take it on a yearly basis and you get only three days free trial. I don't know how people are... Are, are okay with that if they're just new. I really think I should make an updated version of how to start print on a man as a complete beginner because I think that if you don't know how to create your own shop, if you don't have your own audience yet, if you're just starting out, spending all that money is, is, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous, especially when you know hosting a website for like two, three years is like a hundred bucks and WooCommerce and WordPress is free and you can get like a bunch of really good templates and plugins and they integrate as well with Printful. Or you can get Fourth Wall for free or you can get a bunch of other solutions that are definitely cheaper than $24 a month build yearly on something you're just trying out. So if anybody's using Shopify, by the way, just interested in that. I was also seeing a lot of Forbes articles about um, Shopify, Etsy, Zazzle. I was thinking about making a video about me reacting to what Forbes know about these things because Shopify was placed under Etsy alternatives. No, it's not an Etsy alternative. Etsy is a marketplace. Ta-da! <laughs> but in any case, I'm not sure what's going on with the world of Shopify. I think that for people who do no marketing, already have an audience or something like that, that could be really good because their tools might be worth it. The process of designing is easier. But for now, whoa, yeah, that that's a big change. I wasn't aware of that. I know it's probably not news to you, but it was news to me, so I put it here. And last but not least in local news, there are four other videos planned for this month, five if you were including Patreon. So we have March trends because you guys asked me to continue on this tradition of what is going to trend next month with national holidays and stuff like that. Print on a man embroidery, place it and how to create really cool Instagram reels for it and full Lexica AI video. There will also be the monthly Patreon video, which is all my tips and tricks for fourth wall after mastering my store, which I think a lot of people can use these tips and tricks for other store builders as well, not just fourth wall. There was also the Easter bundle released yesterday, free on Patreon for patrons of the $7 tier and on Maytribe for $5. I'm reminding you, if you join Patreon, you get 
everything that was before, not just moving forward. So if you're joining now for the $3 tier on Patreon, you can get access to all of my exclusive videos, which were about how to build a WordPress website, how to actually write a WordPress blog post, fourth wall shop from start to finish, and a bunch of other cool tutorials, including Pinterest. And if you're on the $7 tier, you get a bunch of free bundles for commercial use, uh, loads of them. I think there were like already more than 10 by now. Or if you don't want to support on Patreon, you just want to get these really cool Easter graphics. They're on maytribe.com under the shop and available for commercial use. Don't know if I have much more to say. I do know that I'm batch filming today because I'm doing a lot more batch filming these days and I want to get a lot more content out. I have a lot of content planned for March. This entire thing is videos that I want to do and obviously I probably won't have a lot of time for all of them, but I do want to get out of the way all the t-shirt comparisons because I have all of them now. I have like 11 t-shirts here, all of the pants comparisons, print on demand bras, many other things. Like I have, my, my house is just filled with products, including blogging with Payhip, one product shop, uh, probably to order those uh, business cards. That was like a really cool product really cool product. I do want to work on like some kind of how to start print on a man if you're just a beginner, like the roadmap for that. Should you start with Redbubble or Public or Society6? Is it still worth it in 2024? I do want to continue the how to photograph your own items with a print on a man photo shoot. So I'm going to photograph my own items at home and show you how to use the products that I have taken photos of and products from the photo shoot with Sivan and Nicole on their shops and on mine. Maybe a Hostinger blog how to make and sell paper packs. I really don't know. There might be another contest as well this month. So feel free to stay tuned, whether you're subscribed to the channel, a Patreon on Patreon, a free subscriber to the newsletter or on our Facebook community. But with that being said, and with many other videos that I'm filming today, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as usual, see you guys in my next video. Bye!